On today's podcast, we're going to learn how to deal with the tragedy of losing your children. We'll talk to our guest, Lee Wagner, as he shares his heartbreaking tragedy, how God spoke to him on a missions trip, he listened to God, and he made a decision to help others. We all face challenges, crucibles in life, that make us or break us. What matters is how we respond to such roadblocks. That's really what defines us. Through inspirational stories from all walks of life, this podcast will provide you with techniques to overcome and grow from life's most challenging experiences. Hello, everybody. I'm Mary Lee Aitenhan coming to you live from the Dividend Studios in Brentwood, Tennessee for my podcast, Crucible. You can find me at AitenhanHealthCoaching.com. If you like this podcast, please like, subscribe, and share. Joining us to share today as my guest on Crucible on this episode entitled A Walk to Remember is my guest, Lee Wagner. Lee and his wife, Debbie, lost their two children, Jillian and Lee Jr., at the ages of 18 and 16 years old. Lee has been in transportation for 46 years in many capacities, and he specializes in sales. And welcome, Lee. It's so great to have you. I just really appreciate you jumping on today to the Crucible. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be uh, with you, and, and, and I'm honored that you would uh, like to hear my story. Absolutely. You've got a very huge, powerful story. And um, let's let's just jump in right with, um, you know, the day of the accident. Okay. Um, Mother's Day, 2004. Um, we live in Peachtree City, Georgia, and we travel to Columbus, Georgia, which is 100 miles, uh, for lunch with, uh, with Grandma, mm -hmm. um, Debbie's, Debbie's mother, my wife's mother. Uh, Jillian and Lee, Jillian was 18, Lee was 16, and they insisted on driving their own car, which is not uncommon for, for teenagers. So we said fine, and uh, so we drove separately down mm -hmm. to Columbus, Georgia. Uh, when we finished uh, lunch, um, the kids hung around for a little while, but as kids will do, they wanted to take off and go back home and visit with their friends and uh uh, and so they left ahead of us. Okay. Uh, the the route they took was up the interstate 185 back toward uh, uh, Peachtree City. Debbie and I decided to take the back road. So we went up Georgia 85, which is a, a two lane road and just mm -hmm. kind of took our time and, and uh, got back home. And the kids weren't there, but that was not unusual. Uh, but when. We tried to call them. We couldn't get in touch with them. Um, uh, we started calling their friends, and nobody had heard from them. And this was getting to where uh, they, they should have been home. Sure. Uh, so I got on the phone and started calling the county. There was five counties between Columbus and Peachtree City. And I call the sheriff's department in each county. I started with Muskogee County, which is Columbus. Uh, they didn't have any report of anything. Um, Meriwether County, Coweta County, Fayette County. And I got the Troop County, which is where LaGrange is. And they said, hold on a minute. And they switched me over to the, <clears throat> to the highway patrol. And the highway patrol mm. simply told me that there was a highway patrol and a corner on the way to your house oh no um and your heart just dropped well of course it did uh and and you it, there's crazy things go through your mind of course we 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 prayed hard but but the truth was a highway patrolman in a in a corner don't come to your house because somebody ran a ditch um and and also, it crossed my mind, which one can I live without? Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and my answer was, I can't live without either one of them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But anyway, the, the coroners arrived and, and the news was doubly bad. I had lost both children in an automobile accident. 
on Interstate 185 around LaGrange. And um, Jillian was, was driving. She was, she was 18, Lee was 16. Um, there, was a, there was a car that came down the on-ramp and evidently didn't see Jillian Lee and came right out directly in front of them. Um, and according to witnesses, Jilly yanked the wheel to the left to avoid him and succeeded. She didn't, didn't avoid him. And the, I mean, she did avoid him and the car went on. Uh, but in the meantime, she barrel rolled the, the Jeep Cherokee and into the median. Uh, she was, they both had their seatbelts on. Uh, she was the first one to come out. Um, as they were barrel rolling, the doors popped open. On the uh, the driver's side, and her seatbelt was cut by the pavement, and she came out. Um, Lee was had his seat reclined, and he submarine backwards out from under his seat, and went through the mm. back hatch, wow. uh, which had opened at this point in time, and out into the to the median. So both of them were ejected from the vehicle. Uh, Jillian died instantly. Uh, when the rescue EMTs got there, Lee had some minor signs of life transporting to the local hospital and he was DOA at the hospital. Um, and, and you just, um, you you know, in an instant, your life is, is, is completely changed forever. And, and you want it to be over, uh, at that point in time. Um, there's, uh, there's, I don't remember a great deal about that day, but I remember some key things. I remember a phone call from lifelink of Georgia. Uh, Mm -hmm. Dilly and Lee both had signed their driver's license with donor, uh, indication, uh, donor card indication. And, Mm -hmm. uh, so it was lifelink of Georgia wanting to know if they could harvest organs. And I told the sweet lady, I said, you must, you must have the, the, Worst job in the world, having oh, to call yeah. uh, a, a, a grieving parents and ask for the organs of their children. Yeah, and she said, we sure. certainly do. And I said, well, they signed up for it and, and they, they would want this to happen. And so you have, you have our permission. Um, um, and a sidelight to that, um, we were told later that there was four four different individuals that got cornea. Um, Mm -hmm. Someone got a liver. Um, Lee's organs were a little more in better shape than Jilly's uh, because of the way she was, uh, the way she was uh, uh, killed in the accident. Um, But uh, we have, we have sent requests to LifeLink, but, but you know how that is. Everything is very right. And we, we have never to this day gotten any kind of feedback that, or any visits from anyone we would love to, but, uh, but that's up to the, the other individual, the recipients, not to us. So, uh, but, um, uh, the other call that I made was to my two sisters in North Carolina. Um, and, uh, they, they were, they were beyond help at that point in time. But, but anyway, we, we, we talked it all through. We, we had a huge, uh, double funeral here at Brooks United Methodist Church in, in uh, mm. here in Peachtree City. And then we transported them home to, to my home Methodist Church in, in Welcome, North Carolina, uh, which is near Winston-Salem, um, and had another big double funeral there. We, we had just moved to Georgia like two years earlier, so our kids had had friends and family in North Carolina and school friends. And, and then they had made a bunch of friends when they got down here. Sure, so, sure. so that was yeah. the reason for that. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, but that's, that's the accident. Um, uh, if you can imagine, I mean, it, it, to compound everything else, it was mother's day. Um, right. And, 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 Oh, by the way, my birthday, I was born on mother's day. So, oh, so oh, uh, no. you know, <laughs> just, you know, uh, uh, oh. beat you down and then hold you down and beat you some more is, yeah. is kind of the way the way it, it, it went. But uh, but, you know, you, you 
you also you have friends that that want to say the right things that don't know how. Oh, uh, right. You know, yeah, I under- how how could God let this happen? I heard that a hundred times. Right. And God didn't let this happen. Uh, it, it, my God and 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 my Jesus are here to comfort me when when this sort of thing does happen. Right. And, and that's 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 the way I feel about it. And but. But when I when I speak to to youth groups, Mary Lee, I, I make sure I, I tell them that this was a Sunday afternoon. It was a sunny day. The roads weren't wet. Right. Traffic was normal. Nobody was 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 drinking. Nobody was on drugs. Nobody was coming from a place they shouldn't have been. Right. Uh, nobody, to my our knowledge, was was on their telephones and and not paying attention, and yet right. the 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 worst of tragedies happened. And and when I speak to kids, I, I I try to impress upon them that if this can happen to 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 someone that's trying their best to do the right thing, right. Then, then, how many times are you increasing your odds, kids, when you're doing these other things that you shouldn't be doing? Um, right. and exactly. If that comes across right. Yeah. But, um, well, it, yeah, it does. And, and rightly so. I mean, I guess that just shows, you know, I, I've gone through a similar experience in my own life. You know, I lost my dad in mm-hmm. a split second, and our lives were forever changed as well. And um, you're right, the platitudes that people gave to us were horrible. And I know that, you know, when you give them grace, at least I do now, because they just didn't know what to say. No, 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 um, you, you, you can't. It, you, you, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but same same situation with my dad. There's There's nothing, you know, the only thing that we could come up with afterwards was that there was a malfunction within the airplane. Mm -hmm. And that took like almost 15 years to prove, you know, and to research. And, um, you know, I just, so I, I totally understand that. And I applaud you for, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about you going in the places that you speak and the people that you're able to help. Okay. I think that's, I think that's Uh, the things that, that are, that are very key to me, uh, personally, um, Some some weeks after the accident, um, we were in church one Sunday, and our, our minister, who we dearly love, um, cornered us after the service and said, you know, I, I hadn't mentioned this before, and it doesn't appear that you need it, but a lot of families that, that go through tragedies like this need some counseling. And, uh, you know, maybe you should go see some, some marriage counseling and whatever. And we said, okay. So we scheduled it and, and we went and, and one of the first things the lady said, and the only thing I remember actually, she said, uh, I want to tell you up front that 87% of marriages, of, of marriages that get, go through the death of a child end up in divorce. Yeah. And you've just lost two children. Right. And before I could speak, Debbie, my wife, Debbie, said, in order to get 87% failure, you have to have 13% success. You put us in that column. Oh, good. For and you. it was so, so powerful because, uh, Mary Lee, it, it, it took away immediately that problem in my mind. Right. Because I knew I didn't have to worry about losing somebody else that i loved right exactly uh, it, it just uh it, it meant the world to me and and i don't think we ever went back to a marriage counselor after that we didn't need to um yeah i understand so, so it was uh it was just uh, uh wonderful and 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 yes we've had we've had our troubles we're, we're a married couple um uh, but we've never never discussed never thought about going our separate ways we're 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 bonded right. together um yeah. by by this and, and everything else exactly and just 
the fact that she made, I mean, literally made that decision that you guys were not going to become uh-uh. victims of this, you know, situation. No. You're not going to become, you know, uh, a statistic and you're going to come out on the other side, you know, victoriously. And you're mm-hmm. not going to allow that to happen. And I, I think, honestly, when people are in those split second, you know, moments of their lives, I think we're all given that chance to make that decision. Like, are you going to let this define you for the rest of your life as being a horrible situation, you know, and poor me and I'm the victim now and I'll never get out of it. Or are you going to come out, you know, victorious? And that was one of the things that I distinctly remember as well, making a decision because everybody said to us, because it was, you know, my mom had the three teenagers, she was 45, you know, and they're like, oh, we feel so sorry for you. It was just so sorry, you know, we were just, oh, it's just, you know, your poor mother and you poor children and how are you, you know, and it, it didn't help at all because that, no. that pity, that pity that they were basically, you know, I mean, they're trying to express their love. And like I said, you oh, give people grace and yes. it also teaches you what not to say, you know, to somebody else <laughs> um, yeah. when they're, somebody else is in that situation. But I just decided I'm not going to be someone who's going to be pitied. I will not, I will not be that person. I, and I, I agree. And, the, up, yeah. and the, uh, the, 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 the favorite saying, I think, um, in, in the in the, uh, the the funeral line, as well as you know, when you run across somebody, it, it, I, I know how you feel. Right? <laughs> they they, yeah. They, no, they you just want to smack them in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure that I feel grief differently from from Deborah, uh, and differently from anybody yeah. else. And it just, uh, uh, you know, it's it, 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 I know how you feel and I know they mean well, they're trying to think of something to say, but it's just, yeah. the, the, you know, they, <laughs> in most cases, make you feel worse. <laughs> exactly. I know, really, there needs to be a class on, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> things not to say, but. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll write a book on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, things it'd not, probably things be. Not to say in a tragedy. Exactly. It'd be a hot seller, honestly, because people, yeah, they're just feeling awkward. They're trying to show their empathy and their compassion to you. And that's, that's how I interpreted it as an adult. But at the time it was just like, yeah, you don't have a flipping yeah. clue. And I, I've never, I've I've never, and you oh. haven't either said, said a, uh, uh, a course word to anybody in response to that. Yeah. Uh, you, you just exactly. don't. So tell me about your, your, I'm going to call it your grief journey because you walked from Georgia to North Carolina. Yeah. And yeah. That, uh, and I uh, remember, I remember when you first shared the story and we were probably out for dinner for something. Yeah. Kevin and I and you and Debbie, and I was just so struck in awe by that. I thought I've never heard of anyone doing this. And I thought, I okay. thought it was the the coolest thing. So, share with me how God um, spoke to you in that as well. Okay, I, I, I will. Um, can can I put something else in front of it? Sure, I, absolutely. I, I kind of I, I have everything kind of in chronological order, and the walk came about okay. four or five years after the fact. But uh, I want to okay. talk about trips uh, first, and then I'll get to the walk if that's okay with you. And, Absolutely. And, and our producer. <laughs> yes, this is your story, babe. You do it how you want to do it. Uh, January before the kids left on Mother's Day in May, uh, Lee came to me and he said, uh, the church is having a mission trip to Mexico and I want to go. And of course, I've been traveling Mexico and Central America for forever and uh and I said, okay, let's, let's go. So we plan to go on this mission trip. It's the building, building team mission trip uh, to a, uh, a uh, uh, ghetto type area called uh, Santa Rosa Apodaca uh, in a, a slum area of Monterey, Mexico. So we uh, had meetings uh, all through the January, February, March, April, May, uh, you know, to get ready for the, for the, for the big trip. And, and then of course this happened and, and the church came to me and said, we, we don't expect you to go on this trip. And I said, uh, 
I think I want to go for Lee. Uh, I think I want to, he wanted to do this and I think I want to complete the task if you follow what I'm saying. So, so I went and, and it was absolutely fantastic. And, and I'll Mm -hmm. tell you about, uh, tell you now about meeting Cowboy Jesus, if that's all right with you. Okay. So, Cowboy Jesus. So we load up, we load up the church bus and, and it's, uh, I don't know, there's probably 25 of us. And uh, <clears throat> we take off to, uh, to Laredo. Um, and it's 1178 miles. So it's a long drive. We stopped in, uh, in Louisiana. I want to say Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, mm-hmm. the first, the first night and, uh, the next morning, Myself and um, and another uh, member of the team are loading luggage in the into the bus, and the bus has a hatch in the back. So we're just sure. we're luggage in the hatch in the back, and and a voice said, uh, "Are you guys with this mission trip?" And I turned around, and and there was a tall, lean, uh, uh, faded blue jeans, big belt buckle, uh, boots that you that that weren't that were work boots. Sure. Um, uh, a plaid shirt and a hat. And I said, uh, yes, sir. I said, is the bus in the way? Do I need to move it for you? And he said, no, no, no. He said, here, here's, here's three twenties and, uh, you're going to need it for this trip. And I said, well, well, thank you. I said, come inside and I'll get the, uh, the coordinator to write you a receipt. And he said, no, no, no. He said, uh, I don't, I don't need a receipt. He said, uh, uh, you'll, you'll need this money and you know where it came from. Mm. And I said, okay. And I turned around Mary Lee and put another bag into the trunk and was going to turn around and chat with him a little bit more. And he wasn't there. And, wow. uh, this was a, this was a Hampton Inn and we were sitting in the parking lot in front of the Hampton Inn and could probably see in a hundred yards either way. Right. And I, was, I said, where did he go? And he said, I don't know. We walked around the front thinking he was at the front of the bus. So we couldn't find, couldn't see him. Mm. He wasn't there. So <clears throat> we went inside and I handed three twenties to, uh, to Chandra, the, the, the coordinator. And I said, this is, this is from a, a guy. And I told the story and, and she said, well, he needs a receipt. And I said, he wouldn't, he didn't want a receipt. He said, Here's three twenties. You're going to need this. And and he, he was gone before we we turned around, glanced around. He was gone. Mm. Okay, now to, into the next afternoon. So we're we're heading down I thirty five about a hundred miles from Laredo, and uh, the fan belt on the air conditioning unit popped off. Now this is uh, the Fourth of July week. Oh no, in South <laughs> Texas. Yeah. Needless to say, by the time we got Laredo, we were hot. Yeah. Um, but I've been in Laredo a hundred times. And so, so I, uh, I told the guys, I said, let's, uh, let's, uh, stop at a, at a Napa, at a auto zone, at a, at a someplace and see if we can find a belt. And so we went in and I showed them the broken belt and they measured it and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they went in the back, came out and he said, actually I have two left. I said, well, give me both of them. I had not asked the price. I said, give me both of them. Mary Lee, they were $29.95 a piece. Oh. (laughs) And it. There you go. So it's $60.87. But of course, you know, God don't pay taxes. Right. Uh, (laughs) And so that was the first indication that. I may have somebody looking out for me. Yeah. There may be somebody that, 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 that cares about, about me. And, and I just, yes. I, it's all over me. And so the, the trip went on and it went great. And, and I've got one more, one more quick story. And, and of course you can already edit anything out you want to, but uh, w- one more quick story about a rock and this, this, the way they build things in, in Monterey, Mexico, it's, it's very arid. It's a desert area is they, they go and get dump truck loads of river rock, just just mm-hmm. round river rock, and they dump them out, smooth them down, and then they pour a slab, and then you build your building. And that's what we, we were actually we were putting a roof on it. Every morning we would 
get in a prayer circle and 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 say our prayers and our our blessings to to everything and and one one day toward the end of the of the trip somebody said you know we're building a a a family life center at our church at brooks and this was again many years ago and they said let's let's take each of us take a rock back and put it in the cornerstone of mm-hmm. of our church so we did so we all got in a circle and and at one time we reached down and we picked up a rock. I don't know whether you can see this or not. My rock had a W on it. Yeah, I can see it. Aww. You can see it. My yep. rock had a W on it. Nobody else's rock had anything on it, but my rock right. had a W on it. Now, now yeah. some people, some people said, "Wait a minute, Lee. Uh, w is so rarely used in the Spanish language. It most likely is an M." And I said, "You you you could be right." But I picked it up like this. Right. Looks exactly like a W, yeah. Again, and it's not etched on there. Again, it's it was it was God's way of saying, Lee, I know who you are. Ah. Oh. Yeah. And and it, everything's gonna be all right. And that's awesome. That that I've, I've been on many, many mission trips since then, and I've got, I can tell stories about those. Uh, I, I've gutted houses in New Orleans. Uh, uh, I, I, I take uh, clothing. We, we set up at one point in time, uh, we set up a, a program called Jillian Lee's Closet, and we took donations oh. in, and I carried them down to an orphanage mm-hmm. in Sabina Hidalgo, and I did that for several years. Uh, um uh, other trips we did other things um I, in fact uh, they're wanting me to go to uh uh peru this year and and do some stone work which which i love to do stone work but uh i don't know whether i'll get down there or not but uh but anyway i wanted to, i wanted to in, inject that for just a, just a second uh into the the conversation uh yeah, it just was great. uh was god's way of speaking directly to lee wagner and yeah. uh, and Absolutely. lee wagner heard him yeah, it's absolutely. That's great. Um, we also, uh, when uh, when Jen and Lee um, left, their their both of their college funds were near maturity, and mm-hmm. so we didn't have anything um, in mind to to do with the college funds once they weren't going to be used anymore. So we set up a little scholarship fund and each year we gave scholarships out to the high school that they, that they attended um, here in Peachtree city. And mm-hmm. for, I think we did that until about two years ago when the funds finally ran out. Um, awesome. Each year we would pick out uh, uh, primarily a student that, that was going into the medical field. And um, mm-hmm. we've got uh I think we've got six or seven nurses now, and uh, and we've got one doctor that wow. will be a vascular surgeon in about another three months. Wow! Uh, he's nice. finishing his his residency and internship now. Uh, mm-hmm. And and listen, we didn't sponsor the whole thing. We gave them most of the scholarships for a thousand to two thousand dollars each, so they could buy sure. school supplies and and a computer or whatever they needed you know and like that i don't want to tell you that we put we put a student through medical school uh because the yeah. scholarships weren't that big <laughs> but uh, no i understand um, still every every little bit helps sure sure um about five years after jillian lee left i got real restless and debbie recognized it and she said what what's going on and i said i've got to do something i don't know what i want to do but i got to do something uh i said i just um uh it, it, my heart is is aching and she said what what do you got in mind and i said i think i want to walk to north carolina and she said you're crazy <laughs> i said well hear me out i said I, I i think i want to trace their their final journey from where the funeral took place at at our Methodist church here and then we transport him back to a, the the final rest place in our in our uh home cemetery there in, at, at bethesda um uh, in north carolina um and she said how are you gonna do it and i said i don't know and she said you know you're not young and i said i understand that but uh but i said it's something i want to do so uh 
what I what I started out doing was was um, I, I couldn't figure out how to get around Atlanta, and I didn't want to walk straight through the middle of it. Yeah, and so, for so good I came up with this idea that uh, that I would walk with 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 youth groups, church groups, civic groups, anybody that wanted to walk with me, anybody that wanted to raise money for their civic group, I would walk with them, and uh, and I recorded my mileage. And so, so when I, when I started the final walk, I had already walked, uh, about, uh, 120 miles. So I looked on a, on a map and, and 120 miles put me out about the, uh, the Georgia, South Carolina line. So one Sunday afternoon, I told Debbie, I said, take me there. And she put me out and I walked from, from there, the rest of the, the, the totally, I walked 412 miles. Wow. To, uh, to Winston-Salem. And, and, and I would, I would walk every day. I blogged every day. And that's, that's this website that, that, that I have, mm-hmm. uh, a walk to remember.org. It's got a blog on it where I blogged every day. And Mary Lee, you would not believe the people I met, the things that happened oh. to me in that journey were just, were awesome. Um, uh, I had, uh, I didn't, I didn't stay at a hotel the whole time. Uh, I had people take me in. Um, most of them were, were some of my former salesmen, uh, in the trucking business and, sure. uh, what they would do, they would, I would call them, uh, and they would come out and pick me up from the side of the road, wherever I was near their house. And, and then they would take me and, and they washed my clothes. They, they, you know, they fed me, they, they, and then they would take me back the next morning and set me out in the exact same spot that no. they had picked me up in. And I would continue to walk. And, uh, uh, it's just, uh, it just was, um, uh, it was amazing. And I write about that in, in that, uh, walk to remember. Um, uh, but, uh, and I don't want to go into that completely, but, uh, but, uh, uh, it just, uh, I mean, I walked by w- one morning in Gastonia, I was walking up, uh, I want to say it was 29 us 29, uh, through the main streets of Gastonia. And there was a little wooden car wash uh to the side of the road it was like a one bay or two bay hand car wash and there was an old black man in in there sitting in a chair and he spoke to me when he walked by he said you you need a you need a cold water and and of course i carried water in my backpack but it wasn't cold i said sure i'd love to have some he says come on in so so i went in as i got closer he didn't have but one leg so he was sitting in a in a in a wheelchair and uh, he said, uh, where, where, are you, where are you walking to? And I told him my story. He had uh, two other guys helping him, and he stopped him, and he says, come over here and uh, listen to this man's story. And, and I told him my story and, and where I had walked from and, and where I was headed to. And sure. he said, uh, can I pray for you? Mm. I said, you sure can. Mary Lee, he, he, he made the two boys stand him up oh. and, he, and he prayed. Uh, and wow. When I left that little wooden car wash, I, I, I could have floated on air up to Charlotte. It, it was just, uh, uh That's neat. It, it's just amazing. And I, and I have just story after story that I write in the uh, in the blog that that things like that happen to me almost every day wow no uh, uh it just was so so inspirational so so the the when i got to the church well a, as i walked by the time i got to charlotte uh somebody stopped me on the street and said are you are you lee wagner and and i said uh yes and they said, I'm so-and-so with the Charlotte Observer. Can I interview you? And I said, sure. So <laughs> <laughs> then I walked to uh, Gastonia, and, and somebody stopped me and said, I'm with the Gastonia Gazette or whatever the Gastonia paper is. And, right. and can we interview you? Yes. I got to Salisbury, North Carolina. Uh, can we interview you? I said, yes. So... I have all these articles now from all these newspapers that, that, that caught on to this story of this, uh, this old man walking up the highway. 
<laughs> by the time I got to, um, to, to welcome, um, I had planned to go to the high school, my old high school, which is where Jillian Lee had attended before we moved to Georgia. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was, I think there was 30 of my classmates from the class of 70 that were standing outside that, that wanted to walk with me for the final, I think it was three miles over to the church from the school. Wow. So they walked with me down Tall Pines Road um, wow. to, the, to, the, to the school. And, and as we walked, I drifted forward and back and talked to every one of them that some of them I hadn't seen in, in 30 or 40 years except at the class reunions. And when we got to the church, uh, Fox News was there, ABC was there, um, CBS, uh, <laughs> and 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 it was just it, it, it was amazing what what was going on. Um, uh, sometime a week or so after that, Nancy Grace interviewed me for her show on wow. uh, CNN. So it, mm-hmm. it was just, uh, it, it, hopefully we were reaching people uh, that, that, you know, that maybe had a similar issue. I know I had two, two ladies walk up to me in the cemetery and said that their children had died and that, that Debbie and I were such an inspiration to them. And, and that, that warmed my heart. That, that told me that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that's, that told me that God led me to that walk. Yes, exactly. But you were obedient to do it, right? I mean, yeah. most people yeah. would get that idea yeah. and shoot it down because of pragmatics or whatever logistics and and not do it. <laughs> so God bless you for being obedient to, to hear uh, God and, you know, to do his... All I wanted to do was just honor them and, and yeah. doing so... Uh, <laughs> I got all the benefits and, yeah. and but it's always that way. Anytime you let, anytime you let God lead your life, you're the one that gets all the benefits. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Very true. Very, yeah. But, um, and almost every, um, uh, almost every motivational speech that I give, um, I always start out with um, the 23rd Psalm. And Mm. uh, my grandmother taught it to me when I was five years old, and I had to recite it word for word. And um, she taught me several other ones, but this one I always remember. Uh, If you'll let me, I'll recite it now. Sure, you bet. That'd be a great way to close. Uh, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful, Lee. Thank you so much for sharing today. And I'm, <laughs> I'm swiping away the tears. Such a great story. <laughs> well, I, I tell people. I appreciate I say, it. It, it, it. For what what I've gone through, I, I laugh what I want to and I cry when I want to. And, and it doesn't make any difference uh, yeah. uh, who I'm in front of or or whatever, but, uh, but, uh, uh, God has been good to me and my family and, uh, amen. amen. And all the people that you've met along the way too, you know, you've oh, yeah. taken a piece of, oh, yes. of Jesus with you, <laughs> Absolutely. you know, absolutely. So, well, thank you so much Lee for being on today. Did and we, for did sharing we run over your... we no, time? we, no, we're doing great. We're doing great. I just appreciate it so much. Do you want to go into, I guess, really, truly, before we close about okay. your um, the websites or anything like that? Or sure, sure. Um, how people can contact you? or They can. Uh, uh, the, the website, it has a little age on it, so I haven't updated it much, but it, it, it basically talks about 
uh, the accident, the walk, that, 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 but it, it's not current as far as contact information. So let me give you, let me give you my, um, uh, my telephone number and my email. And, okay. uh, and anytime anybody that wants to contact me about anything, we get, uh, Debbie and I get calls uh, from time to time from uh, uh, people at school that say so-and-so passed away and here's their, their parents' number you know, mm. and you need to call them and talk to them. We, yeah. we don't, we don't do it that way. Uh, <laughs> you give them our number and if they want to call and talk, we'll be more than happy to talk to them, but we're not going to impose ourselves on, on others. There's, there, yeah. there's not a, uh, there's not a manual for this sort of thing, uh, right. for, for losing children. There, there, there's just no manual for this. So, um, I can't tell you how to do it. I can't tell you how to get through this. All I can do is tell you how Debbie and I did it. And, sure. and hopefully you can take some notes from that. And, uh, uh, and, and the word, uh, uh the word closure just irks me. <laughs> yeah. I'll finish with this. No- you, you can edit it out yeah. if you want to, but, yeah. <laughs> but you know, every now and then you get someone that says, well, you need to seek closure. And, and, and I don't want to ever seek closure. I want to remember every, fleeting moment I had with my kids, uh, good moments, bad moments. I want to remember every one of them. I want to remember everything that's happened to me since then. And, and I don't want closure. <laughs> I want to remember. Right. I want to remember. Right. But anyways, Lee Wagner, 404-536-2665. That's my telephone number. Mm-hmm. And you can reach me at... Lee Wagner 03 and Wagner spelled W A G N E R um, at gmail.com. Lee Wagner 03 at gmail.com. Lee, you guys have just got such generous, beautiful hearts, both you and Debbie. Thank you. It's just Thank been you. a pleasure to know you.